Hello, good afternoon once again. Uh, good day to you, uh, all my students. I hope that you are doing great, doing fine for today. Uh, and I hope that you are uh, very uh, well and uh, you are fine. You know? So to start with our discussion today, um, allow me to share uh in your group the uh comparative models of policing no so uh, let us start so um for this we have a very uh, nice discussion Okay, let us start with the comparative models of policing. So as we all know, uh, police come from the Latin word policia, and also it comes from the Latin word polit, or uh, Greek word politia, which means government of the city. So with this, our main purpose, why we need to study uh, and compare police department, is because uh, we need to understand how this police department is working and what are the structures in this organization. So, basically, you can understand that in criminology, studying this area is a, a vital portion for you to understand the nature of your course. Now, accordingly, uh, the gov police is a uh, de government department which is charged for the regulation and control of the affairs of the community. And also, it is established to maintain order, enforce the law, and prevent and detect crime. This is uh, how it was um, defined. No? So, uh, if you can uh, refer this, uh, police, are, uh, police departments, or even the police, they have their code of ethics to serve and to protect so basically this is to maintain order as well as enforce the law and prevent and detect crime if possible now uh, basing on our definition of the comparative models of policy you know, you can understand that uh, it does not only refer to the philippines no it also focus on uh, areas uh, such as in other countries. Okay, so in other countries, you can see that the policy is also vital. Now, seeing the definition itself, Okay, let's go back to comparative models. So first thing first, we need to identify and define what is this uh, comparative. No? When we say comparative, this means that you are uh, establishing a link or likeness or unlikeness of the two objects, such as uh, estimating uh, these areas. Now you need to understand that when we compare, we need to understand that what are the strengths and weaknesses of this police organization? So in the Philippines, we only have the Philippine National Police. So due to globalization and uh, ASEAN integration. So uh, when we say ASEAN integration, we are already integrated. No? Our policing system must adapt also what is common to ASEAN countries as well as in globalization. So we having this term comparative. It means that you are comparing two police organizations, two or more police organizations. So, by the influence of globalization, as you can see here, uh, when we say globalization, this is the transnational uh, exchange, not only of products, investment, information, ideas, and authorities, as well as exchange of people. So, uh, having that, now, 
uh, globalize kung meron tayong globalization kasi uh, you can see that our people no the, the people itself is already integrated not locally but in national level so it means uh, the global globalization works because products and goods as well as services are exchanged all throughout the world for example in terms of globalization um yung mga cellphone natin no when you have your cell phone uh the it it is the product is manufactured in other countries for example the products are manufactured in cebu it was sent to china and to manufacture the whole unit no this is how globalization works so the flow of products and the investment as well as the information and ideas are uh source out from different areas of the world no also it is a growing interpretation of states as well as market or markets communication and ideas so the ideas itself revolve o yung mga idea is nagpapasa-pasa and then nag nagbuo ng isang product or even services or even idea that was utilized not only in a particular country but in the whole world no Ganon siya nag-work. Now, uh, also, this is a process of uh, creating a transnational market. So, when we say transnational markets, uh, we create uh, something that is acceptable not only in one country but also in other countries. Um, a good example of this are products. For example, are uh, technology products such as laptops and cell phones. Uh, a good example is the brand Realme. No, Realme is also found in uh, Germany, uh, found in other countries that creates transnational markets by the Chinese uh, manufacturers, as well as the, this involves politics and the legal system of a country to sustain a global economy. That is how globalization is represented in a wider perspective. Uh, Kung sa tingin natin ba, mag, uh, kahit saan ka dumako, kahit saan ka pumunta, andyan pa rin yung uh, mga products that is manufactured in other countries. The same with the idea. No? The globalization and the adoption of people uh, sa community ay nakikita doon yung globalization. No? Kung walang globalization, walang technology, walang uh, development, walang market, parang yun ang pinaka-essence nito. Now, what is the effect of uh, globalization to the law, law enforcement itself? Now, uh, when we say globalization, uh, it does not only affect one country. It affects all. Now, ano ang ef effect to nito in terms of law enforcement? Now, because globalization opens the world to us. No? Parang binuksan na ni globalization yung uh, idea natin na anong gagawin kung anong anong ano bang ginagawa sa other countries at ano ba ang adaptable dito sa atin so parang ganun ba no so law enforcement or in the law enforcement area it is expected that the law enforcer is the main function or the primary function is to serve and to protect so we cannot deny it uh, it is already existing it is known especially uh, because uh, you can link this subject in the law enforcement code of ethics. So the primary purpose of the police is to serve and to protect. That is their motto. Now with that, uh, an accountable flow of migration and open markets presents new threats to state-based human rights regimes, great challenge to law enforcement. Now, uh, as we go on to globalization, we exchange our goods, our products, there are new pricing threats that also pose danger to humans uh, because uh, protect or, or the danger of humans is the concern of law enforcement, no? law enforcement agency to enforce the law to protect the lives and properties of the people. Now, by this globalization, the change of the perspective of the people no? and the introduction of new threats 
to, lo, to the country pose a greater concern among law enforcement agencies and law enforcers because there is increasing threat. For example, due to globalization, the use of the internet, there are new emerging uh, crimes that are present in the community. No? Uh, such as yung mga hacking. Dati wala naman yung ganun. No? But due to globalization, nagkaroon ng mga hacking, yung uh, identity theft, parang nagpipretend na ikaw kahit hindi. So parang may uh, mga ganun na bagay due to globalization. Now, threats to law enforcement. Uh, these are the things that uh, poses threats to law enforcement in terms of globalization. So there is an increased volume of human rights violation as evidenced by genocides and mass killings. So there is a, a change of the uh, change of the platform in terms of uh, law enforcement is concerned. Now, uh, for example, the genocide. No? When we say genocide, the whole tribe is being obliterated. It's being uh, eradicated or uh, erased in the history. That is um, genocide as well as mass killings. So, because of globalization, especially in Africa, no? if you can... Uh, uh, if if you you are uh, familiar with the history in Africa, uh, most common committed uh, aspect of human rights violation is the genocide, wherein the whole tribe is being obliter obliterated by foreigners, uh, not native to uh, Africa. So this is how the threat is being. Uh, you know, uh, being uh, characterized in the present global globalization aspect. Now, uh, why this happens? The question is, why this happens? Because of the colonization, no? Because of globalization. And the people or the, the, and one country wants to expand its territory because they want to gain, for example, the Spaniards, uh, want to colonize the Philippines because of the spices. Because spices in the Philippines or we are called the land of spice. Now, uh, yung mga spices, yung mga uh, tinatawag natin yung mga pangrikado or in, in our term is lamas. No? Uh, this is how the globalization works in terms of genocide and mass killings because uh, foreigners, outlanders are wanting to conquer the place to use the land. Now, it happens that there is extermination of uh, the tribe. Okay. Aside from that, uh, there is conflict between nations in terms of economic aspect, uh, shall we say China and the US. Now, and there is a conflict especially in uh, territories, allies. So this is how globalization uh, pose threat in terms of law enforcement. And the second one, or the third one, is the transnational criminal networks for drug trafficking, money laundering, and terrorism. So, bakit mayroon ganon? No? Once... Once uh, the country is open to the world, no, because open to globalization, we cannot deny the fact that uh, drug trafficking will then be uh, common in the area, as well as money laundering and terrorism. So, uh, in many instances, when the country opens to the world, for example, this is uh, happening in other countries as well as in the Philippines. When the country is open to the world of globalization, a threat where increase will increase in terms of drug trafficking, money laundering, and terrorism uh, compared to countries that is not open. For example, in Korea, no, particularly North Korea, they are not open to globalization. They are uh, using their own products. Now, what happened? We, there is no, I think there is no terrorism 
no money laundering. We, we do not hear anything from South Korea because they are uh, isolated. No. No. That is how how globalization works. Now, for this, let us, let us now discuss the types of policing or police system. So, there are four police systems. No? Uh, first is the common law system. This is a practice in English-speaking countries. Uh, there is a strong adversarial system and rely upon the oral system of evidence in public trial is the main focal point. No, adversarial system. What is adversarial system? If you are the, the accused, you will be the one to present your evidence. Okay? So, and then... It is trial by, or it is public trial is the main focal point. Uh, parang yung ginagawa nila ni, ni Natol po ba? This is trial by publicity. No? Bakit? Pag sila yung nakauna, tapos uh, merong marasasabi, and then yung public views is increasing, no? and then in favor to the one side, sila yung mananalo. That is how public system or uh, trial by publicity is... Uh, working so the common law system this is adversarial system which is the accused should provide evidence and also known as anglo-american justice the other one is the civil law system civil law means it is about property no distinguished by a strong inquisitorial where less right is guaranteed to the accused and written law is taken as gospel and subject to little interpretation. So, sa ganitong paraan, ang inquisitorial, the judge will be the one to evaluate the guilt of the party. And there is, the accused has no right at all. Or even, there is but a lesser right. For example, in the Philippines, we have the right to remain silent, the right to have a counsel, uh, the right to be informed of the nature and the accusation against him. So, these are Rights of the accused. Now, in a civil law system, there is no such thing as the right of the accused. Okay? And the law, the written law, is considered to be the gospel. So, what is being written, it should be followed. Okay? Uh, this is also known as the continental justice or we call it the Romano-Germanic justice. The third one is the socialist system. So socialist means there is a social system. No? Uh, the way Marxist and Leninist justice uh, exist, especially in Africa and Asia. So in this concept, the concept of socialist system and kaning Marxist and Leninist system, kung Alam nyo yung uh, work ng NPA, the, nation, the uh, National People's Army, no? yung, yung NPA, they have this concept of Marxist Leninist. Leninist no? uh, para bang uh, gusto nila na lahat ay equal. Pero hindi yan pwede. Bakit? Uh, kasi we have our government that regulates everything. Now, uh, the procedures of socialist system is distinguished by uh, the design to rehabilitate the offender. No? Uh, common is socialist because there is social hierarchy. Itawag siya socialist because of the social hierarchy, for example, lower class, middle class, and upper class. So, this is the socialist. And the procedures is basically applied uh, in Asia in Africa. So, kung mata, ma, if, if you can uh, understand deeply, the concept of socialist system is somewhat like communism. No, communism because uh, uh, the, 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 this policing system, if you commit crime, surely you will suffer. You know? Like in China, uh, what happened? What will happen if somebody will commit crimes in China? No, they will enforce harsh punishment because of the communism or the concept of Marxist-Leninist justice. No, next is we have Islamic system or we call it the Sharia 
Sharia system. Because uh, based on uh, the concept of natural justice and customary laws or uh, tribal traditions. No, this is Sharia system. That is why yung mga mga uh, kababayan natin no, na mga uh, hindi lang Muslim, hindi lang so those, uh, those Filipinos who are uh, practicing the is uh, religion of Islam, they will undergo this Islamic system. Meron kasi yan silang trial court na we, we call it Sharia courts. Yun bang the policing system kung paano kung ikaw ang uh, if you committed violations against other family, so meron tayong rido. Iba yung uh, system na ina-adapt dyan. No? Unlike uh, yung policing talaga na uh, enforcement of the law no? kaya merong dato, merong tribal leader because of this Islamic system particularly among uh, religious who are, who are practicing Islam okay, so next since there is police system there are also theories that supports the police service okay, so we have here the continental theory when we say continental theory, it is a theory which explains that police service maintains that police officers are servants of higher authorities. So it means that our police, when we say continental, the police is the highest uh, body. They can do anything no? because they are servants of higher authorities. Uh, deserve the, uh, for example, King of Spain in Italy that is continental, or in uh, the the police is not a servant, but the police is servant or uh, not a servant to lower class, but they are servant to kings, to prime ministers like that, or even uh, uh, queen and kings. Okay, this theory prevails the continental countries like France, Italy, and in Spain. Okay. We have also home rule. Now, if you are familiar with the home rule theory, this is a police service which states that the police are the servant of the community or the people. This is what we practice in the Philippines. The police serves as a servant to the community or the people means uh, based on the principle of to serve and to protect now, the home rule theory so this theory is common in England and in the United States it is also a police uh, service which prevails in the country with decentralized form of government means not centralized no. decentralized means we have the president, the senators, we have mayors, we have governors, uh, like that setup. So this is likewise a uh, police service theory that should prevail in the Philippines based on existing laws, concepts, and principles. So kung makikita nyo, <coughs> in the Philippines, no, uh, based yun sa sinabi ko kanina na um, the police are servant of the community not only for higher authorities no if it is servant for higher authorities matatawag natin siyang continental but if he is a servant of the people that is home rule because uh, he became the servant of the people okay so the concept of police service so we have this old police service and we have also modern police service. So, ano bang kaibahan nito? Okay. Ganito yun. Old police service, it means the measurement of police success is on the number of people arrested. Old police service yun. Kung ilan yung uh, nahuli, kung ilan yung na, uh, nahuli during operations, or nahuli dahil na commit ng crimes, yun ang basis na maging uh, 
basihan na yun ang performance ng polis. That is the old concept. Well, the new concept is, or the modern police service, the measurement of police proficiency is the absence of crimes. Kung walang crimes, it means maganda yung nagawa ng polis. So this is how the modern police service is being evaluated. Now, ano ba ang trabaho ng polis? Yeah. Yun, ang, yun ang mga tanong na madaling sagutin. No? Pero, may kaakibat din na explanation ano ba talaga ang trabaho niya. Okay. Does police only limit itself in the number of arrests based on the old, old principle, old police service practices? Or the police is the one who maintains or suppress or even uh, prevent the commission of crime. Diba? So, itong dalawang ito, the answer of that question is that yung dalawa, kasi police is, uh, they can also um, arrest people as well as prevent the commission of crimes through omnipresence. Ano ba yung omnipresence? Okay. The presence of the police in the community creates an atmosphere for the criminal to not commit crime. Okay. So, the absence of crime is also the basis for police proficiency. In this case, it is being uh, defined the top concept of old and uh, new or the modern police service. Okay. Now, we have here the deviance control. So deviance control, this is the primary functions of police organization to reinforce community values and laws uh, adapted in Germany, China, and Japan. No? In this area, they adapt this deviance control. We have also here the civil order control, which is adopted in United States in um, countries that is organizationally separated from deviance control, performed regularly by the uh, police in a country. No, apil ng Philippines ani. Now there is a patrol. No? I know that you have subject already about police patrol. So this is civil order control. Now, uh, let us tackle about the evolution of the policing system. So for the policing system, we have Praetorian guards. So these are military bodies who serve as guardians of peace in incident. Rome or ancient Rome, in which the idea of policing is said to have originated. So, the policing system, we have, uh, di ba sa Rome, nagikan, sa England. Actually, we have also here, uh, Robert Peel. Robert Peel is the father of modern policing. Okay? So, uh, aside from this, we have also the officer... Officer de Fax. Okay? Or Pikes. De la Pikes. This is the French term which claimed to be the origin of the police officers. Daghan uh, kayo kwa na caps, police officers, or officer de Pikes. De la Pikes. No? These are uh, some of uh, the evolution of the policing system. So for the period of The Anglo-Saxon uh, of policing system, this is in ancient England. So, the TAN policing system. Is a, TAN. a system of policing emerged during Anglo-Saxon period, whereby all male residents were required to guard the town or the TAN. Uh, the town. 
to preserve peace and protect the lives and properties of the people. About 700 AD, the people living in England in a small rural towns used the Anglo-Saxon system. The Anglo-Saxon system is wherein uh, 10 families in the town equal into tithings. Each tithing elected by leaders who is known as tithing man. Since 10 tithings amounted to 100, the leader of the families were named as Reeb. Both of the tithing men and Reeb were elected officials. The process, uh, the process uh, of this system, uh, also known as the brothers keepers, means that there are a group of families and anybody who will violate the law, they will be the one to surrender the violator. Now, this is uh, what we call as Reeb. Both tithing men and Reeb were elected officials. And Kining Reeb, they have judicial power as well as police authority. So, uh, the, the Reeb or the leader in its 100 families has the authority to enforce power, no? to enforce judicial power, punishment, and as well as police authority. So, the police authority involves um, arrest, involves uh, capturing the violator. So we have also you and cry. Okay, the you and cry in a village. Uh, this is started in Britain, which provided a method of apprehending a criminal by an act of compliant to shout to call all male residents to resemble and arrest the suspect. This is uh, how you and cry uh, originated. Also, we have a judicial practice uh, which is trial by ordeal by proving guilt or the innocence of the accused, uh, determining by subjecting, he, subjecting him to a uh, unpleasant and usually dangerous experience. In present terminologies, it would mean an employment of the third degree ordeal for example trial by ordeal you know the trial by ordeal if you committed crimes again if you committed crimes you walk in the fiery uh in maglakad ka sa, sa sa fire and let us see if you are innocent or not ah, maglalakad siya doon sa uh, mayroong fire no Alalaka rin siya doon. Tapos, after that, if he emerges na walang, walang pasok sa paa, it means he is not guilty. That is how trial by ordeal is done. Uh, for example, another is uh, by boiling oil. No? Dahil isa kang, for example, uh, may isang uh, makasalanan, no? committed a crime. And then, they will prepare a burning oil. Uh, they will burn boiling oil. Then, subukan nila maglagay ng kung ano-ano doon. Tapos, ipapakuha nila sa accused. And after that, if the accused is not born by the oil, it means he is not guilty. So, that is how how trial by order ordeal is implemented. Now, uh, this the ordeal was derived from a medieval Latin word, deal in the comb. So, meaning, this is a miraculous decision. Yeah, it is a miracle. Because if you are guilty or not guilty, nobody, siguro, in our time today, kahit sino naman, uh, subukan nyo. Oh, uh, there is a boiling water or boiling oil tapos maglagay kayo ng bato at kunin nyo while it is still burning tingnan natin magagawa pa so it is based on miracles okay next is we have also here uh, trial the Norman 
period policy uh, which is introduced by Norman William uh, the conqueror he is the king of France when he invaded and conquered England a military regime of conquerors and dictators began to change the concept of crime being committed against the state so if in Norman state no, Norman Norman period policy if somebody commits crime if somebody commits crime and then uh, the crime committed is a violation of that ang magagawa is parang uh, ang mangyayari doon ikaw ay eh, you are against the state so that is how Norman William uh, the conqueror or the king of France uh, implemented his policing system so he developed this shire rib so if you remember in the previous discussion that I have sa uh, a, a previous discussion na atay rib which is composed of 100 families and each family is composed of 10 members so the rib will decide having the judicial power and the police power to arrest and decide if the criminal is guilty or not guilty so in this shy rib the policing system during Norman period when in England was divided into 55 military areas which is headed by a ruler that is called by Riv or the headman or the lieutenant of an army and then the 55 military divisions of England they will they are called shires no, divided into 55 and each 55 areas are called shires and then we have the shire Riv the leader has the power that no one could question his or her actions as the ability uh, uh, or as a imminent power that nobody can question his decision or his actions okay so uh, there is constable or constable or the keeper of the horse that is constable were appointed to a village to aid a reed in his duties it become the source of the uh, the word constable so sa pilipinas ang tawag na to police or patrolman in other countries they call them constable no? when we say constable that is equivalent to patrol officer or police officer while in other term there is uh, the term sheriff where the word originated the sheriff word was taken from the sheriff so when we say sheriff it means the highest authority no highest authority uh, in, in in the philippines we call it uh, chief of police in its municipalities no? next is we have also here in norman's period traveling judge or the circuit judge no? uh, this judge is selected to hear cases where the formerly being judged by the sheriff so uh, the, the traveling judge or the circuit judge, this is now the, the first origin of the appellate courts. Saan ang appellate courts? Di ba? If you can, uh, if, if you know, uh, ang criminal justice process in the Philippines, gikan sa lower court, mag-appeal siya mo ato sa higher court. No? Especially if cases decide, decided in the lower court is dili satisfied ang accused or ang, ang accused or even an other party till it's satisfied so the same with uh, during this um, Norman period nga naa siya gitawag na traveling judge or circuit judge so the judge is uh, tasked to travel through on her criminal cases this is the first instance of division of the police and judicial powers so naa siya division na sa judicial power Kesa una ang police po, hindi man siya mo judge. Kwaron, dili na. Kaya na nag-travel. Gitawag sa circuit. Judge. Okay. Next, we have here uh, Ligis Hirichi. Hinrichi. Meaning, uh, the offense were classified against the king and individual. Naan na, na yun. So, ang king, lahi ang iya ha? Ang individual, lahi po iya ha? 
This is how it is classified. We have also policeman who becomes public servant. Or legis means law. No? Legis herin si. Okay? Legis herin si. The law of the, uh, the law as a public servant. Okay? Next, police and the citizens have a broad power to arrest. This is the first time that the system called citizens arrest. Now, on saan ang citizens arrest? Citizens arrest, arrest means that the civilian is able or is uh, allowed to arrest violators of the law. Now, May violate sa law, ang civilian pwede mo na cook niya because of this uh, citizen's arrest. Not, not only police is allowed to arrest during this time. Then we have also grand jury which was created to inquire on the facts of the law. A system which made in question onto the facts of the crime and eliminate the Anglo-Saxon trial or trial by ordeal system. So, na asya gi apply nila. Let us remove the old fashioned trial system. Katong um, burning by oil, walking in the fire. Let us remove that. Let us have the proper trial. Now, this is the uh, gitawag na toog system wherein the police will try individual based on uh, evidence. Pwede na siya. And then we have also a uh, frank pledge system. So the system of policing whereby a group of 10 neighboring male residents over 12 years of age were required to guard the town to preserve peace and protect the lives of the properties of the people. The same with what I have mentioned earlier. The uh, frank pledge system, the same with rib system, means brothers keepers. What is brothers keepers? If you have a group of men, then you are responsible for the action of your uh, brother or the action of your neighbor. You should guard your neighbor to protect the lives and property of the people. This is the prank fled system. Dere uh, nag-originate po na siyang gitawag na recognizance. So what is a recognizance? In modern times, gitawag na to siya o recognizance. Where an individual who is uh, who committed crimes will be arrested, especially mga bata, a release yah subject to parent supervision. So recognize recognizance ang tawag na to ana. But for for the ancient times, it tawag na siya prank pledge system. Prank pledge system is when when the accused or when the person will promise that I will be the keeper. For this person, no, I will present him when he is needed. Next is we have also Westminster period of policing. Unsan is Westminster. It is called by this uh, name because of law governing policy. No, it came out as the capital of England, which is the time of Westminster. So the period. Uh, this period has the following features. Sani? Guards were appointed and the duties of the constable. No, constable, kato ni siyang mga watch. They watch. And in daytime, or gitawag sila ward. No, constable at night. And in daytime, gitawag sila ward. Okay. So, Statute of Winchester in 1285. The collection of regulation in at keeping peace. Next, uh, we have also statute of one uh, 1295, the law that marks the beginning of for few hours, or the statute of 1295, no? which demands the closing of gates of London during sundown. Okay, another we have also the justice of peace. It is about 1361. Uh, three or four men were who were learned in the new law of the land were given authority to pursue arrest, chastise, and imprisonment 
of violators of law. So, they handled felonies, misdemeanor, and infraction of city or village ordinances. This was later abolished in 75 years after. Another law which was uh, uh, born during this time or another policing system that was developed during this time, we have the Star Chamber Court. Uh, this is a special court designed to try offense against the state. The Rome setup is formed in a shape of a star. Prosec uh, forma, parang parang mayroong star siya. Tapos yung judges are given uh, great powers, such as a power to force testimony from the dependent, leading to a great abuse of power or brutality on the part of judges. So, uh, parang start siya tapos yung defendant is andun sa gitna and then uh, he will be asked by these judges uh, maybe an extraction of confession or admission is uh, provided now ano ba yung confession ayuman ano ba yung admission no uh, siguro na nalaman niyo na yon di ba uh, actual, actually this is acknowledging the guilt or acknowledging the uh, circumstances behind the crime. Okay? Next is we have here uh, Keepers of Peace. No? This is about uh, the proclamation of King Richard of England uh, around 1195. Uh, which requires the appointment of knights, no? uh, knights to uh, keep the peace of the king by standing as guards on bridges and gates while checking the people entering and leaving the cities and towns. We have also here the keepers of peace followed by King Charles II of England in 1663. So King Charles II passed an act, established and promoted the employment of watchmen or the bellman on duty from sunset to sunrise. Another uh, policy system was developed, the Magna Carta for Greek Charter, a law promulgated by King John of England upon the demand of the Knights of Round Table, forcing the king uh, to sign the same with the following features. There is no free man shall be taken in prison, punished or exiled except by legal judgment of his peers. Uh, so it means the peers, para bang uh, the great charter, yung mga, kas, yung mga kasamahan mo, yung mga kakilala mo, sila yung magjudge sa sa'yo base sa peers. Ano ba yung peers? Mga kakilala, mga kasamaan, mga kahalubilo mo, sila yung magjudge sa iyo if you are guilty or not. Okay? Next, no person shall be tried for murder unless there is a proof of the body of the victim. So, uh, you cannot be judged no? as a murderer if uh, there is no crime committed or there is no body presented, di naman pwedeng sabihin na ikaw ay uh, killer tapos wala ka namang napatay. Diba? Parang ganun. Uh, that is the Magna Carta of Great Charter. Next, we have also London policy prior to 1829. So, Henry Fielding, this is the magistrate in London in 1748. He introduced the first detective force, which is known as the Bow Street Runners. The Bow Street Runners, a group of men organized by Henry Fielding and and who also investigated uh, crimes handed over uh, to them by the volunteer constable. Okay? Uh, or no, no. A Bow Street Runners, a group of men organized by Henry Fielding and named by his brother John Fielding, took 
uh, task to catch thieves and robbers. Okay? This is identified by carrying a top strip and a royal crown. No? A, a made up of eight constable who are investigated, who also investigated crimes, handed over them the volunteer constable and watchman. So, catch thieves and robbers, the work of most street runners. Then in 1798, the Marine Police Force was established. This was the uh, first constable that given salary and paid by local magistrate. Initially made up of 220 constable, assisted by 100 registered dock workers, and was responsible for preventing thief of cargo. This is also widely regarded as the first modern police force in the world or the Malin, Marine Police Force. No? In the sense that they are, were not government controlled and were responsible for prevention of crimes. Okay. And next is we have the, in London, 1829, Sir Robert Peel. Okay. Sir Robert Peel is a Metropolitan Police uh, he, he, he organized the Metropolitan Police in 1829. The first Metropolitan, Metropolitan Police Act of 1829. This is considered to be the largest police service that operates in Greater London. That others include the City of London, uh, Police, and the British Transport Police. This is the finest police force around the world. So if you can remember in your introduction, Sa, sa Leia 1 when you have the patrol Sir Robert Peel is the uh, he implemented the patrol system uh, modern policing system okay so uh, the motto of London Metropolitan Police is on a total policing so um with this, I hope that you enjoy our discussion for this uh, video series and uh, the link will be provided for your uh, further readings and evaluation. Thank you so much. See you on the next video.